It is a big celebratory high holy day for the people of my culture. Woo girls. It's a big day for woo girls. When I first saw that there was going to be a complimentary glass of champagne on the, the flyer today, I had two thoughts. The first thought that I had was woo! <laughs> and the second thought that I had was, I wonder if it's actually going to be champagne. Not because I think that they're cheap here, but because I'm such a woo girl that when I was in college, my drink of choice was peach Andre. Do any of y'all know what peach Andre is? No, no? For those of you who don't know, this sucker over here, peach Andre is sparkling peach flavored Moscato. Legally, you have to put Moscato in air quotes. You cannot call it that without the air quotes. And that meant that I thought that I was better than everybody from my hometown when I was in college. Still do, still absolutely do. But I think that that speaks to the fact that like your drink of choice definitely says something about who you are as a person, right? Like we all know that that's true. Like if your drink of choice is bush light, then someone needs to tell you, you were never gonna go pro, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> if your drink of choice is, let's say, a Jack and Diet Coke, then you have a really complicated relationship with your father. <laughs> now, I was such a woo girl growing up. This is before I ever even started drinking at the age of 11. I was such a woo girl growing up that when I was a child, my mother told me, Courtney, if you ever want to get a husband, which... 50-50 for me. If you ever want to get a husband, you need to learn about football. And so I took it upon myself to do some research. And I watched every single episode of Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders making the team on country music television. <laughs> and this was before my parents could afford TiVo. So I could not fast forward through any of the parts where they talked about football. So I did learn some stuff. Namely, that I love cheerleaders. But it did help me. So uh, the week after this, next week is my birthday. Woo. Woo, you're getting it, you're getting it, exactly. Woo. The week after that, I have a date with a retired pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. So did learn about sports there. Before you come up to me after this show and say, Courtney, sweetheart, the Red Sox, that's a baseball team. I know, I know it's a baseball team, okay? But they're both incredibly long ball sports but at least in one of them, you get a little song and dance break in the middle of it. I'll let you decide which one of those it is. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to talk? I don't know. I do love holidays. I love, I love all of the white girl holidays. I love, you know, the holiday season because typically, if I'm not dressed like Nancy Drew's slutty sister, then I tend to be dressed like the lead in a rom-com Hallmark movie. That's good for me. It's usually where I like to live. Outside of that, I also love spooky season. Spooky season is great, especially as a person who, who here listens to true crime podcasts? Okay, some woos, some clapping, some hand raises from one very enthusiastic white woman. I appreciate you. That's great. I think that's part of our culture as women. So like, I, I, know, I don't know a lot of guys who have, who, who are really big fans of true crime. You know, like it's, it's typically a women's genre. And that makes sense, right? Like we are doing every bit of research possible to hopefully have that 0.002% chance, better likelihood of surviving when something horrible inevitably happens to us, right? Which is why it's so concerning. It's such a red flag when guys do say that they're into true crime. Because yeah. that shit goes both ways. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that we need to have the same interests as the people that we're dating. Like I, with the true crime, but also I started taking um, a rumble boxing class, which is boxing for girls who are too cool to do Pilates. And when I was in that boxing class, there were a couple of guys in the class with me and I was like punching and punching and punching. And I was like, oh, this is great. They're gonna see how fit I am and that we have very similar interests and they're gonna wanna talk to me afterwards. And as I'm punching and punching, I'm thinking to myself, this Fall Out Boy song is really great. And then I'm thinking to myself, I don't know that these white men need to get any better at punching me. <laughs> so now I think we, we can have different interests, it's fine. Um, are we single in here? Yeah. Yes, yes, okay, exciting. That's very exciting and fun. I definitely am unfortunately single. Um, thank you for the woos. I don't, I don't really know how to 
we're, we're gonna we're gonna leave to the woos to me probably for that. It feels a little like I'm walking into a wolf den if I go to the bathroom now. But no, I am single. During the summer, I was on dating apps. I tried to like rectify my singleness, and I was trying to do hot girl summer. That was what one of the other high holy days for women like me. And so in order to try and celebrate Hot Girl Summer, I did what a lot of Chicago women do, and I was trying to be on a boat in the playpen. Nah. Any of y'all able to do that this summer? Not me. Thank you. We are, we are alike. I tried my best, though. Like, I was pitching myself on different dating apps. You know how, like, different dating apps have different demographics? So you have to pitch yourself differently? Like, Tinder, you have to be really direct because it's just for hookups. And Bumble, you have to be, like, really complimentary and very intellectual because it's for simps <laughs> and so i went on hinge and one of my prompts i was like looking for an fwb for fourth of july weekend friend with boat <laughs> apparently not everyone thinks that that's what that means <laughs> and so i went on a different dating app a different site and i thought okay you know what i'm gonna pitch myself a little bit differently and so i wrote woman seeking man with access to aquatic vehicle, available wee hours of the night, 4th of July weekend. Triflers need not apply. <laughs> and I got some responses, I got some feedback. But as it turns out, that was a little bit more date line than pickup line. But one of us came back alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do love I do love celebrating. I also love like heritage months. I think that those are super fun. I know that they can get kind of cheesy, but I do like them. Like for example, I went to the uh, first basketball game during Black History Month for the Chicago Bulls this year. That was fun. But it was kind of weird the way that they decided to like celebrate it. So for example, when they had everyone stand for the national anthem during the basketball game, like before it started, they said, please rise for the Black National Anthem. Do y'all know what the Black National Anthem is? So for those of you who don't know, it's Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's a beautiful song. But then as we were standing and they sang the song afterwards, they said, now please continue standing for the regular national anthem. It's a little weird. But it got me thinking, you know, like what is the national anthem for all the other heritage months, right? Like I'm a woman, okay? So during Women's History Month, they're gonna say, you know, please rise for the women's national anthem. All too well the 10 minute Taylor's version. <laughs> And then they're probably gonna say, okay, now please remain standing for the regular men's national anthem. One full Andrew Tate podcast. <laughs> Do you think he can record them from a Romanian jail? I don't know. I don't know if he can. I actually, it's funny, I got that tag. It used to be one full Joe Rogan podcast, but he's like not even relevant anymore, really. It became the Andrew Tate podcast because I got that tag from my father. And I don't know what's worse, the fact that I'm taking comedy advice from my father, or the fact that my father listens to the Andrew Tate podcast. Both of those are pretty bad. I think my dad is probably next to get into a beef with Greta Thunberg online. Top G. That's, that's probably yeah. top G. I don't know, I do love my father though. My dad is actually one of the bullies uh, that Tim was talking about on his TikTok earlier. And that's fine, because my dad's the one who taught me how to be a bully. I don't know if you can tell by my appearance, but I definitely was a middle school mean girl. That's something I like about myself and I appreciate. But I'm not... You know, I'm not uh, free from negative criticism on TikTok or Instagram or whatever as well. My problem with getting negative feedback on comedy videos specifically is that they're so boring. Like, I'll give you an example. I got two comments from the same guy back to back on a video that I just posted earlier today. The first comment read, so funny I forgot to laugh. Jeez. Boring. <laughs> but then he followed it up immediately after with, but I like your outfit, though. And one part of me, the feminist part of me, was offended. How dare you reduce me to my appearance? I am so much more than that. And then the other part of me, the part of me that my father raised to never leave the house with chipped nail polish, who after tonight's set will probably say, you know, you could have worn some spanks with that dress. <laughs> <laughs> thought to myself oh thank you you like my outfit <laughs> I don't know like 
you can never hurt my feelings more than I do every day when I look in the mirror. Oh. No. If you want to make me feel bad about myself, you're going to have to get personal. <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know. My dad is a good person, though. I'll wrap on this. My dad's a good person. He's a really good gift giver. And I know that being uh, a good gift giver is not necessarily always an indication of how much people love you, but for my dad specifically it is. Um, I'll give you an example. Christmas was just, you know, earlier this week, and he gave really thoughtful, considerate gifts. My brother, for example, uh, he gave my brother a thousand dollar check, which was impressive and also helpful because my brother works entirely on commission. He works a sales job and he has not sold anything yet. <laughs> and my dad gave me a pen, a really nice pen. A Mont Blanc pen, a $400 pen, but what that tells me is that when my father is old and past, he anticipates that I will need to write $1,000 checks for my younger brother. Yeah. And that is how I know that I'm not my parents' favorite child. <laughs> no, it actually solidified that I'm not my parents' favorite child. That, that joke is actually old. Uh, my dad gave me that pen for his birthday. That's the kind of guy he is. For Christmas this year, he gave me ink for the pen. Yeah. Fun fact for you guys, I actually lost that pen. That's why I'm not the favorite oh, child. Oh no. Yeah. My name is Courtney Zelazi. Thank you so much. Yeah.